friends if you remember in the last class we have discussed about the mix design steps related to Marshall and super pave mix design and we are supposed to start discussing about performance based mix design concepts from uh, today's class. Uh, however, it just uh, appeared to me that uh, it is better uh, to first discuss about hot recycled mixtures and cold uh, bituminous mixtures before starting performance based mix design concepts and further the characterization of bituminous mixtures. So, I think um, the performance based mix design concepts uh, will also include the concepts related to uh, performance based mix design of uh, uh, recycled mixtures as well. So, it will be more rational to first discuss about hot recycled mixtures and then we will shift our discussion towards performance based mix design concepts. Uh, so, I have just altered the content in this particular way that today we will discuss hot recycled mixtures followed by cold bituminous mixtures and then we will talk about performance based mix design concept and this will be followed by uh, our final discussion on characterization of bituminous mixtures under this particular module. So, when I say hot recycled mixtures I am basically talking about something which is popularly termed as RAP wrap. So, what is wrap? So, wrap stands for reclaimed asphalt pavement and what do we mean by reclaimed asphalt pavement? It is not basically a pavement type as the name might indicate it says reclaimed asphalt pavement, but actually it is not a type of pavement rather it refers to removed or or and reprocessed pavement materials containing asphalt and aggregates. So, these materials they are generated when the existing asphalt pavements which are in service they are removed maybe for reconstruction or resurfacing or to obtain access to buried uh, utilities. So, when we construct a pavement it appears to be a smooth surface a new surface without any distresses over a period of time when traffic starts moving over it when the pavement is subjected to load and environmental conditions we start observing distresses uh, on the pavement and a time period will arrive when the existing surface will no longer be in functional condition. Then most of the times we have to remove the existing surface and lay a new uh, bituminous mixture layer over it. So, uh, the removal uh, can be done using uh, different types of machineries. We have uh, scrappers which will just scrap the existing material uh, and then it will be dumped into the truck and it will be further taken to the plant for stockpiling. We can also break uh, the pavement directly using probably a bulldozer uh, and uh, then uh, further this broken chunks will uh, be subjected to crushing and then it will be finally stockpiled uh, in the mixing plant. So, this stockpile material which you are seeing it refers to the reclaimed uh, asphalt pavement which we also call as wrap. Uh, just to uh, make you comfortable I have just some sample of wrap with me. Now, I want to show it to differentiate how the wrap differs in appearance uh, from the conventional granular materials or the aggregates about which we have been discussing um, in our presentations. So, uh, with me uh, I have some aggregates uh, if you are able to see it uh, you will see that these are uh, virgin aggregates uh, and it is not coated uh, with any form of binder this is in its natural form. And then we have some materials which will appear uh, somewhat a dark uh, brown to blackish color to you depending on the age of the pavement depending on the source of the material. So, this is basically a reclaimed asphalt pavement material here we have aggregates in my hand I have aggregates which are coated with binder and this binder has been aged during its uh, service uh, life and therefore, the color has turned uh, from the conventional black color of the bitumen to something which appears to be more of dark brown color uh, or you can say faded black color. So, the material which I just showed you the wrap it consists of aggregates and aged asphalt binder. Now, 
the question here is that if we already have a material and we are talking about sustainable construction, we are talking about environmental friendly construction, then what is the problem in reusing the same material again and again in the pavement? The problem is that the oxidized binder, the binder which has undergone short term and long term aging present in the existing pavement, it will be very stiff in nature and because of this higher stiffness of this oxidized binder, if we try to use it again and again, this higher stiffness can lead to uh, distresses such as um, uh, fatigue cracking. And that is why the presence of this oxidized binder, it impedes the reuse of wrap and this is a more challenging aspect to handle that we are trying to re reuse wrap uh, again in the pavement. However, reusing the wrap in the pavement is of course economically beneficial because uh, if we are reusing the same material again for new construction, we are reducing the need of acquiring new materials and these new materials also includes virgin aggregates as well as uh, asphalt binder uh, which are uh, non-renewable uh, energy uh, resources. Uh, also uh, it is environmental friendly because as I said it reduces uh, the use of non-renewable natural resources like virgin aggregates and asphalt binder. So, definitely when we think of wrap, its reuse is beneficial as it gives us benefit in terms of cost as well as environmental friendly solution uh, for construction of pavement. However, as I said there are challenges related to it and the primary challenge is the presence of the oxidized binder. So, high percentage of replacement in new construction. Uh, can be very challenging and researchers are continuously trying to seek answers to this uh, challenging question on how to maximize uh, the use of wrap for the construction of uh, bituminous pavement. This note has been directly taken from one of the uh, Federal Highway uh, Administration publication which states that there are four major production cost categories. This slide is basically to tell us about the uh, importance of replacing the virgin materials with the wrap material. So, if you see the cost of um, um, production of a bituminous mixture, this cost include material cost, production cost, plant production cost, transportation cost which is trucking cost and then lay down cost that is the construction cost. Now, if you try to compare all these cost categories, we see that materials are basically the most expensive production cost category which comprises of almost 70 percent of the cost to produce the hot mix asphalt. And in this particular hot mix asphalt, the presence of bitumen which is an a economically variable material and is also a very important component of the uh, bituminous mix. Now, if we try to use wrap again this will reduce the need of this expensive material that is bitumen. On the other hand, it also reduces the need of uh, acquiring uh, virgin aggregates, thus making the cost of construction less and thus making the uh, construction environmental friendly. Now, before we talk about how to reuse wrap, we talk about the mix design concepts and how it is different from the conventional mix design concepts of the HMA. It is important to understand few aspects related to handling of wrap. So, first we talk about the stockpiling of wrap that how the wrap is stockpiled once it is acquired uh, from the uh, existing pavement. It can be either in the form of crushed material, it can be either in the form of uh, big chunks which will be further subjected to crushing. So, crushing is an important step after we acquire the wrap from the existing pavement. So, once we have acquired the wrap material in the crushed form, uh, there will be variability of stockpile depending on from where we are taking it, from how many sources we are targeting to uh, take the wrap because for a given uh, hot mix plant, it is it will not be very feasible uh, to uh, make multiple stockpiles of wrap from different sources at it as it will acquire a large space. Uh, therefore, the variability which is associated with the stockpile of wrap. Uh, is important and this will finally lead to variation uh, in the mix design as well as in quality control. So, it is generally suggested that we have to keep wrap from different projects separately. So, if we are trying to acquire wrap from 5 different projects, they ideally should be stored separately. 
But if that is not feasible probably due to the space constraint uh, or management constraint, then at least wrap from one type of pavement should be separated from another type of pavement. When I mean type of pavement, for example, if I am acquiring a wrap from uh, let us say a parking lot and I am acquiring a wrap from a uh, high speed or a national highway let us say. So, these both the materials are designed for different purpose which means the gradation will be different, the type of binder may be different, the purpose of design might be different, so the volumetrics might be different. So, therefore, if we try to mix them together this will lead to large variability in the final uh, properties of the uh, wrap in that particular stockpile. So, what we can do if we have three different uh, wrap from national highways, they can be kept together considering or assuming that the variability in the production will not be very different because all the three facilities are uh, high speed uh, facilities uh, meant for uh, movement of trucks. But as I said wrap from a project for example, a parking lot definitely kept uh, separately to the uh, wrap which we acquire from uh, national highways or state highways. Now, once we are crushing the procured wrap material, it is better to fractionate them and it is suggested that more number of fractions we make. When I say fractionating wrap, I mean I am separating different sizes, maybe I have 26.5 to uh, 19 mm kept separately, 19 mm to let us say 4.75 mm kept separately and then 4.75 mm to further uh, lower sizes kept separately. So, so uh, we can create more number of fractions which is preferable to maximize its use. However, we have to remember that when we fractionate the wrap, the binder goes more towards the finer material or the finer fractions because of higher specific surface area the finer materials will have more bitumen in comparison to the coarser uh, fraction. So, this has to be taken into consideration when we are reutilizing the wrap for mixed design and we have to do the calculations uh, accordingly. For example, what we have seen typically in India that in uh, uh, most of the plants when uh, they keep two different stockpiles usually one is a coarse stockpile of wrap which is 6.3 mm plus and then we have fine stockpile of wrap which is 6.3 mm minus. So, usually uh, on an average it is found uh, that coarse wrap has a residual binder content of about 2 to 3 percent uh, and while the fine wrap can have a residual binder content of about 6 percent considering that the optimum bitumen content is somewhere around 5 to 5 point 5 percent which is typically used for the production of uh, wearing course or binder course uh, we use in India. This tells us about the crushing operation, then we have the stockpiling of wrap and this is how the final wrap looks like and you see once you go towards the final fraction the color becomes more darker uh, indicating that you have more residual binder in the finer fractions in comparison to the coarser fractions. This I already mentioned that in India typically two stockpiles of wrap are maintained. Uh, I also told you about the typical percentages of residual binder we have observed in the coarse and fine fractions of wrap uh, from different projects. Now, one important point when we talk about the mixed design or in general about the concepts related to recycled asphalt pavement uh, is that when we say that we are trying to reutilize 10 percent wrap or 20 percent wrap, we should ideally mean that it is the percentage of wrap binder and not the wrap uh, in total. Uh, for example, let us say in a project we want to use 20 percent fine wrap. Okay? So, what do you mean by 20 percent fine wrap? This is something which we have to discuss. So, in a project we want to reutilize the wrap which means I am using 80 percent virgin material and 20 percent fine wrap. And let us say after doing a laboratory analysis, we found that the fine wrap has a binder content of 7 percent. So, wrap has a binder content of 7 percent. So, when I say 7 percent which means it is 0 0.07 into 20 percent of wrap. So, this is the uh, percentage of total binder we will have in the new mix that is with 80 percent uh, virgin material and 20 percent. Uh, wrap. So, out of the wrap this is the percentage of binder we will get. So, this is how much 1.4 percent 
Let us say that uh, in the typical mix design which we do for the bituminous cores, the optimum binder content is somewhere around 5 percent that is the optimum binder content of the total mix. Okay. So, um, then how much is the percentage of wrap binder in the total mix? So, the wrap binder is 1.4 percent if you take 1.4 and you try to see its proportion in the total binder which is 5 percent in 200, this gives us a value of 28 percent which means we have used 20 percent fine wrap, but the wrap binder in the total mix is 28 percent and this is what we should indicate is the amount of wrap we are using. So, typically the amount of wrap should be represented in terms of percentage of residual bitumen rather than the actual percentage of uh, wrap we are using in the mix because it is the binder which will play a critical role in influencing the mix design uh, related to the uh, production of wrap. Uh, so, typically it is seen that if you know the residual binder is almost similar to the optimum uh, uh, binder content which we uh, uh, use in the wrap then the percentage of wrap bulk will be also equal to the percentage of wrap binder. Uh, let us take the same example that I want to use 20 percent wrap and in this particular wrap which I am using the binder content is let us say 5 percent. Okay. So, which means that the binder coming from wrap is equal to how much 0 0.05 into 20 percent. So, this is equal to how much 1 percent all right and now let us say the uh, optimum binder content of the new mix typically is 5 percent. So, what is the contribution of wrap binder in the total mix? It is 1 divided by 5 into 100, this is equal to 20 percent. So, 20 percent wrap we have used, 20 percent is the wrap binder, so there is no problem. However, if the binder content is too low or too high um, in comparison to the total percentage of wrap, then the actual wrap binder percentage should be calculated and should be used as the actual wrap percentage in the mix. In this presentation how we will go that we will try to ask questions related to wrap and we will try to answer them because ultimately we know how the mix design is done which we have already discussed. So, we just need to see the difference uh, of the mix design of a conventional HMA in comparison to the uh, mix design when we are using wrap in the mixture. So, which properties of wrap do I need to determine? Well, this depends on the percentage of wrap I am intending to use in the final project or the in the final mix. Irrespective of any percentage we use, at these properties we have to determine irrespective of any percentage ranging from more than 0 to let us say even 100 percent wrap we are targeting. So, these properties you have to determine. Which are these properties? One is the binder content. So, mandatorily we have to find the amount of binder present in the wrap source. There are various methods I am not going to discuss about the procedures of determining the binder content um, or extracting the bitumen from the wrap, uh, but I have listed the codal provision and they, they can be referred. So, the binder content can be determined by different methods. The two more prominent uh, methods or popular methods are the uh, ignition oven method whose guidelines are given in ASHTO 308. And then we have solvent extraction method for which we have to follow as to T164. In the ignition oven method, uh, one of the uh, problem is uh, that actually in the ignition oven method, we heat the wrap to very high temperature. So, we are trying to burn the binder from the surface of the aggregates. So, that when we take the difference in mass before and after, we will get the percentage of wrap binder. But it has been found that in some of the aggregate sources, the ignition oven may also degrade some of the aggregate types because of the very high temperature we are using. And uh, this method is also not suitable in case we are also interested to determine the properties of the wrap binder because here everything the binder is burnt. So, it is not no longer available to us to determine the properties. So, this method cannot be used when we are trying to determine the property of the wrap binder as well. The other method is the solvent extraction method in which we basically submerge the wrap sample in a solvent which has the capability of dissolving the bitumen and then using a centrifuge extractor uh, we can uh, remove the uh, dissolved bitumen in the solvent separately and then the aggregates are separated and then we can easily do the calculation to determine the percentage of binder uh, in the wrap material. So, uh, binder content we have to determine irrespective of any wrap percentage we are using. 
we also have to determine the gradation of the aggregates because in the mixed design uh, by now we already know that in the mixed design gradation plays an important role. So, gradation we have to determine after extracting the bitumen. So, we will first separate the bitumen using a, a extraction method it can be an ignition oven extraction method it can be a solvent extraction method and then when we get the uh, residual uh, uh, aggregates the remaining aggregates we will just subject it to sieve analysis and then we will determine the gradation of the uh, wrap source or the wrap aggregates. Okay. And uh, I just forgot to mention that the advantage of solvent extraction is that after extracting the bitumen from the wrap uh, the solvent is further removed because now bitumen is mixed with the solvent. So, solvent is further removed and the binder which will get can be subjected to further testing. So, using this method we can also determine the properties of the residual wrap binder. For all levels of wrap these are the properties which mandatorily should be determined while for uh, higher percentage of wrap when I say higher percent I mean more than when I am intending to use more than 25 percent of wrap in the bituminous mixtures. Uh, we also have to determine the physical properties of the wrap binder. This means that if we are using less than 25 percent of wrap we only need to extract or only need to separate the binder from the uh, aggregate surface, determine the binder content and determine the aggregate gradation and then further some of the properties of wrap. But when we are using higher percentage that is more than 25 percent in addition to these activities we also have to determine the physical properties of the wrap binder and later we will discuss that this is important to uh, use the blending charts and uh, I just do not want to confuse you right now we will discuss what blending charts are uh, in the in further slides. Now, we know that what properties we have to determine coming to uh, all levels of wrap again after you get the gradation you have to determine some of the properties of aggregate so that we can use it in the mixed design. If you remember uh, mixed design once we have the aggregates of the wrap we will require its bulk specific gravity which is directly used as an input in the mix design. For example, in VMA calculation if you remember the formula we have a GSB as one of the parameter and GSB of the mix is basically a harmonic mean of uh, the GSB of different fractions. So, you have fractions of virgin aggregates, you have fractions of uh, wrap aggregates and therefore, GSB of wrap aggregate is required to determine the GSB of the entire mix or the new mix which I am going to uh, make. Okay. So, bulk specific gravity of wrap aggregate is re required as an input in the mix design, but the determination of bulk specific gra gravity of wrap aggregate is not as straightforward as we have discussed about uh, virgin aggregate. So, this uh, aspect also needs to be analyzed critically before we can complete the mix design process. So, why it is not very straightforward because in the wrap aggregate in the, in the wrap aggregates are coated with bitumen. So, it is it becomes challenging that how do we determine the bulk specific gravity of the wrap aggregates and why uh, it is important why it is important to determine because as I say that bulk specific gravity of aggregate is directly related to the volumetric properties such as VMA. So, if you have a mix with 25 percent wrap so this is an observation which has been made we can also prove this using some examples and calculations. So, in a mix with 25 percent wrap an error of 0 0.04 in the specific gravity can affect the VMA of the mix by 0 0.5 percent. I can uh, give you an example uh, just to explain the importance of specific gravity or the or some error which we make in the determination of uh, specific gravity. Let us say that we have any bituminous mixture and let us say that the actual specific gravity bulk specific gravity of the aggregate is 2.65 and by mistake we did some error and the error was very small let us say of the order of 0 0.04 only and by mistake uh, we found that the specific gravity is or we measured that the specific gravity is 2.61. Now, the question is this small error how important is it with respect to the volumetric parameters for example, let us talk about VMA. Okay. So, uh, let us uh, assume few things let us assume that the mix is prepared with 5 percent binder content 
uh, in the mix and let us say that the bulk specific gravity of the mix is 2.4 ok. So, this we have fixed. Now, we know the formula of V m a is what 1 minus G m b by G s b into 1 minus P b into 100 if you remember alright. So, I am just plugging the first the actual value here 2.4 divided by 2.65 into 1 minus 0 0.05 into 100. This is the actual value which we should get and this uh, if you do the calculation you get as 13.96 percent. But let us see that by mistake we did that small error and what it resulted what it will result in. So, V m a now becomes 1 minus 2.4 this is 2.61 now 1 minus 0 0.05 into 100 alright. If you do this calculation you get the value as 12.6 percent. So, you see just a 0 0.04 of error in the determination of specific gravity has resulted in reduction of V m a by about 1.36 percent. Now, this 1.36 percent is very significant for us why? Let us say that for a nominal given nominal maximum aggregate size our codal specification say that the minimum V m a required is 13 percent. So, we did the mix design we are doing the calculation according to the actual value the V m a is 13.96 percent which satisfies the minimum V m a criteria. But our mistake of 0 0.04 in the determination of specific gravity has given a, a wrong value of 12.6 percent uh, by looking at which we will reject the mix design which should not have been done. So, this tells us or gives us some idea about the importance of specific gravity and this is what uh, is written here that when we are using 25 percent wrap or more this error of 0 0.04 can uh, affect the V m a by about 0.5 percent which can be significant uh, in terms of volumetrics. Now, the question is how do I determine when I say it is not very straightforward then how do I determine the specific gravity of the wrap aggregates. So, there are three methods that have been outlined in uh, MS 2 the method one is very straightforward, but is not usually used the method is that once you have removed let us say you have used a ignition oven method you have removed the binder from the aggregate surface you take that residual aggregate and you split it into coarse and fine fraction this uh, we know that how to determine the specific gravity we will separate into coarse and fine fraction and the, uh, further we will de determine the individual specific gravity and they, then we will combine the specific gravity uh, depending on the proportion but this method is not typically used uh, for the determination of specific gravity. Then we talk about method 2 a the method 2 a says that first you determine the g m m that is the theoretical maximum specific gravity of wrap. So, wrap is a bituminous mixture for which we can easily determine the g m m value. So, you determine the g m m of the mixture of wrap using the g m m and once we know the binder content we can easily calculate GSE. If you remember the calculation of GSE is shown here. Okay. So, GSE is a function of the amount of binder and the theoretical maximum specific gravity. Here the value of GB uh, for wrap is typically assumed as 0 1.04 considering that this is an oxidized binder and it will be a little stiffer than the virgin binder which typically has a specific gravity of around 1.02. So, you determine GSE using this particular formula and use GSE as GSE, GSB. So, this is again uh, something uh, uh, very interesting to note here. So, they are suggesting use GSE as GSB, but we all know that GSE is greater than GSB both are aggregate properties both are specific gravity of aggregates, but the consideration of volume is different in both the cases and GSA is higher than GSB. But as suggested in MS 2 if the amount of wrap in the final mix which you are going to use is less than 20 percent then using GSE as GSB will not cause very large error in the bulk mixture because in the mixture it is only 20 percent wrap. 80 percent are virgin materials. So, if you have done a small um, assumption of taking GSE as GSB for that 20 or lesser uh, amount of wrap which you are going to use then this error will not cause a significant error in the 
bulk uh, in, in the volumetric calculation of the bulk mixture all right but if the amount of wrap is more than 20% because once you keep on increasing the wrap percentage this error will keep on accumulating and the error of the bulk mixture will become large so if the wrap is more than 20% and if the um, absorption of the aggregate uh, is also more than 2% then they suggest to use method 2b and what is done in method 2b here we will follow the steps of method 2a that is determination of g m m and then calculation of g s c and further we will go one step further and we will assume some bitumen absorption for that particular source of wrap. So, looking at the uh, historical uh, mix design which have been done in that location the engineer will be, appear, uh, will be aware about the typical um, water absorption of the uh, aggregate uh, which they, they obtain or they have used previously in the mix design. So, looking at the previous records we can assume some value of the uh, bitumen absorption for that particular source of wrap and this bitumen, uh, bitumen absorption along with the value of GSC can be used to calculate GSB and this also we know we, we have seen that the uh, formula for absorbed uh, bitumen is GB into GSC minus GSB divided by GSC into GSB is not it. So, this formula we have already derived. So, you assume PBA uh, based on the previous records. Uh, you know GSC from the previous uh, measurement and calculation. GSB we are going to determine, GAB I am assuming is 1.04. So, using this formula uh, finally, which can be converted to this form, we can uh, calculate the value of GSB of wrap. Okay. So, this method, this is the method to be, to be used when the wrap binder is more than uh, 20 percent in the mix. Now, when I said uh, in method 2a that you have to determine the GMM of the wrap and using the GMM and percentage uh, residual bitumen we can calculate the GSE of wrap. Uh, the determination of GMM of wrap is also not very very straightforward uh, like the conventional uh, method which we use for hot mix asphalt. Well, the method remains the same, but some additional steps needs to be performed. So, if you try to imagine a wrap source and you try to imagine how wrap is acquired from the field, uh, you, you will uh, understand that wrap material may have some uncoated faces okay? and how this uncoated faces results, it results from the crushing and milling operation. So, probably if uh, the aggregate is crushed from this face, then this material is removed. So, this only you get this part as coated and this will be uh, a, an exposed uh, face of the wrap aggregate. Okay? And this face may you know allow water to absorb when because uh, when you try to do GMM in the lab you have to submerge the sample in water. So, when you are submerging the sample in water this face may absorb some water and the measured value or the calculated value will have some error. So, in order to avoid that what we can do we can add some measured quantity of virgin binder or new binder to the existing wrap sample. So, you get the wrap sample and you recoat it with some new virgin binder taking approximately 1 to 3 percent of the weight and this this is actually done only to coat the exposed faces. So, this use of 1 to 3 percent of additional new binder will assure that the entire surface of the wrap uh, is coated with bitumen. So, once you obtain the wrap material do you dry the material at a temperature of around 110 plus minus 5 degree Celsius add measured quantity of new binder and then perform the GMM test as per specification which we have already discussed that is using a picnometer or a rise specific gravity uh, method. Okay? And you, you we will use the same calculation procedure, but in the calculation we have to remove this additional the weight and volume of the additional binder which we have added because we are interested in the GMM of wrap and not in the GMM of the new mix which has been made by adding this new binder. So, the theoretical maximum specific gravity can be calculated uh, as follows. In this formula if you remove this j and if you remove this k the formula is similar to what we have discussed previously alright, but uh, you will see that we are now uh, this is a minus j. So, what is j here? 
j is the mass of added asphalt binder in the air. So, a minus j will give you the mass of the wrap aggregates in the air ok divided by a plus d where a is the mass of oven dry sample in air plus d is the mass of container filled with water at 25 degree Celsius minus e plus k. So, this k is subtracted and k must be the volume. So, this is equal to j by specific gravity of the new binder which we have added ok. So, using this formula and I hope that since we have discussed specific gravity in detail very easily you will be able to understand uh, that uh, how this formula has come up. So, using this formula the theoretical maximum specific gravity uh, of the wrap can be determined. So, once you determine that calculate GSE and in GSE calculation as I said G B will be taken as 1.04 use GSE as GSB ok. So, uh, but you have to remember that substituting GSE as GSB we are basically artificially increasing the value of VMA. Why is it so? Let me write down the formula again 1 minus GMB by GSB into 1 minus PB into 100 alright. So, when you use GSE you are basically increasing this value. Once you increase this value this entire value will come down. When this value reduces 1 minus this value increases. So, basically using a higher value of a specific gravity in, in place of bulk specific gravity will basically artificially increase the value of VMA and large increase is not desirable. So, you will see that when you use about 20 percent wrap uh, this error is only about 0.5 percent, but beyond 20 percent as you keep on increasing the percentage of wrap the error keep on increasing the change in VMA keep on increasing. So, for example, for 40 percent wrap the change is almost about 1 percent which can be very very significant. So, that is why it is suggested that method 2 way can be used only when the wrap is lower than 20 percent. So, that we do not incur a uh, higher error in the volumetric calculation. If we have higher percentage of wrap then method 2 b has to be used. So, GSB is calculated by assuming some value of um, uh, bitumen absorption uh, for uh, now this this bitumen I will just put it as bitumen absorption here I think bitumen absorption uh, and uh, <coughs> using that we can calculate the value of GSB. So, before we uh, conclude let us just try to take an example and then try to see uh, what we have discussed how the calculation is done. So, this is just an example let us say that the GMM of the wrap we measured as per the procedure we discussed and it uh, came out to be 2.545 ok. And uh, then we have used some extraction method and the asphalt binder content in the wrap uh, was found to be 4.5 percent and the specific gravity of wrap is taken as 1.04. Then using uh, these uh, values I can calculate GSE of the wrap ok. If you put this just put in this plug these values uh, in the given formula you will get that the GSE is 2.731 ok. Now, uh, if you take that the percentage of absorbed bitumen is about 1.2 percent and we use this particular formula alright you will get that the GSB is 2.648. So, uh, here you are getting 2.648 and using GSE you are getting 2.731 ok. So, uh, now let us say that we are going to make a mix with different percentage of wrap samples and the virgin aggregate which we are using to produce the new mix has a specific gravity of 2.720. So, let us calculate the GSB of the final mix if wrap is 20 percent in the first case which means 20 percent wrap and 80 percent virgin aggregate and 60 percent in the second case which means 60 percent wrap and 40 percent virgin aggregate. And we will also try to see uh, this calculation both by using GSE and by using GSB in place of GSB alright. And then we will try to see how much error basically comes in. So, uh, how you will determine the GSB of the mixture? It will be by taking the uh, harm harmonic mean which is 100 divided by percent wrap divided by GSB plus percent virgin aggregate divided by GSB of the virgin aggregate. So, this is this is something which we already know. So, I have just done this calculation and this is the table which I generated that when I am using 20 percent wrap and if I use GSE in place of GSB of wrap the value of the specific gravity of the mix 
is 2.722 okay so this is gsb of mix when i am using the gsb which is 2.648 of the wrap in place of gsb of wrap and calculate the gsb of the mix i get as 2.705 this is when the wrap percentage is 20% so the error which is incurred is only 0.017 on the other hand if i am using 60% wrap the error which I incur is about 0.05 and we have discussed previously that an error of 0.04 can cause error in the calculation of VMA which can be very critical in the mix design process. Alright, so we will stop here today and we will continue uh, discussing about uh, the further concepts related to the mix design of wrap in the uh, next presentation. Thank you.